Hey everybody, it's Mike Young, lifestyle nutritionist with a plant-based diet.org. Welcome to chapter 56 of the book, Live to 150. We're talking about why grass lawns need to go and, and why, what kind of relationship does that have with this book? Like, is there a relationship? Well, there definitely is. And let me tell you, I am somebody to talk about this because I have a landscape business, which is which is mostly consists of lawn mowing, believe it or not. And I've had this business since as long as I can remember, probably I started it around uh, age eight in 1978. And I still have it today. And I'm, tr I'm really phasing it out because there's certainly a dilemma here because grass lawns, no matter where you live, unless you live somewhere in Kentucky, I guess, where the bluegrass naturally grows on its own and I don't know, it doesn't need any watering or fertilizing or whatever. If that even exists, let me know in the comments. It's not native. It's not native, it's just there for looks, okay? Uh, you know, that's why golf courses are some of the most environmentally unfriendly places in the world. So is your front lawn, so is your back lawn. If you want it to look good or look nice, I want it to look nice. If you want it to look nice, you are hurting all of humanity is the bottom line, okay? I can't believe I just said that, but it's true because in order for it to look nice, this non-native plant, and it is a plant, but it's not native. It would never do this on its own. You've got to water it. You've got to fertilize it. You've got to overseed it. You've got to put chemicals on there to, to kill off all the weeds that are gonna come up. You gotta put chemicals on there to kill off all the bugs that are gonna come up. It's just a nightmare of maintenance. If you live in an area where you can easily grow a lawn because some areas it's very hard but if you can easily grow it you're better off just having woods out there actually if you want to easy don't really have to do much to maintain the landscape uh landscape nothing better than woods it's uh it's, it's pretty much self-sustaining especially you know uh hardwoods uh maybe some pines whatever whatever natively grows in your area but Another opportunity for you is to put in a food forest or permaculture or agroforestry, whatever you want to call it, where you're actually growing food. Now, I know in some places right now in the year 2022, it's actually illegal to grow this stuff in your front lawn, believe it or not. It's kind of crazy. That's just how we are. Society is set up so that you conform and you get this uh, American dream. I'm also a real estate agent too, so it's funny to hear me complain about all this stuff. And really just... Uh, it's funny to hear someone who's a licensed realtor saying this, like I said, and somebody who's in the landscape business, but I'm not doing those things for money. I'm not trying to get, as, I'm not trying to squeeze as much money as I can out of there. I'm trying to tell you guys that I know better than probably anybody why all this stuff is so wrong and that society needs to change. We need to be able to plant entire yards full of food that need, that look needs to be cherished by people and it needs to, uh, to gain some traction on the uh, the regulatory side, the governments and things like that. And fortunately, as a real estate agent, I know all too well that when someone who has a food forest goes to sell their property, their home nowadays, that real estate agent who's listing the property for sale for the seller usually tells the seller to get rid of all that stuff and plant, a gra plant some grass because that's what all the buyers want, the supply and demand, right? We need to change the demand. One of the ways I'm doing this is by sending this video out in the cyberspace. Please, you guys, share with other people, comment, tag your friends, whatever it takes. But I'm telling you from both a real estate realtor perspective and from a landscape business owner's perspective, this stuff has to go. These lawns are not sustainable, not in any way. And we need to take those opportunities, which are those spaces where the lawns and the grass are growing, those non-native species that you're trying so hard to make look nice. And you've got to put that effort, if you want, into some nice looking food plants. And I know that's not really on anybody's radar in terms of, I don't want my front lawn looking like that. That's probably how it's on the radar, but that's gotta change. Because if your life is supposed to be about enjoying and having fun and living a health optimized uh, existence, then your environment needs to reflect that. Because if your environment shows a lawn, and like I said, golf courses are some of the worst environmental disasters out there. So is your lawn. And all the stuff runs off, by the way, all of it into the storm drains, into the lakes, rivers, ponds, streams, oceans, everything. Okay. It destroys all your, all the stuff all along the way as it goes down, down, down. 
So we just had, there's no choice but just get rid of it because the alternative, and you can still do the alternative, just don't fertilize it. Don't use weed controls, don't use insect controls. You're just gonna be mowing a, a bunch of weeds every week, you know, and actually weeds are just anything that's unwanted. It's not gonna look the same. You might as well plant some food plants in there, right? During the growing season, that's what I would recommend. Or just keep it as whatever would naturally uh, turn in your area. Like on the East Coast of the United States, it's mostly hardwoods, hardwood forests. In some other areas, you might be in a desert. I don't know, the environment may be totally different than that, but don't try to grow grass you know, and, and, and mow it. That's what, you, that's what you don't need to do. Some people have even said online, it's the biggest example of mass brainwashing anyone's ever seen is that everybody seems to think that that's the American dream. That's what I need to strive for and get. Like I said, I've made, I, have made my, I have made my career out of the traditional properties and landscapes with, the, with being a realtor and a landscape business owner, you know, it's, but it's, it's, it's at best, it's less than optimal at worst. And this is probably more likely where we are with it. It's completely environmentally destructive and it is not, it doesn't have any other benefit other than your eyes, which of course you're going to lose your vision anyway, if you've got type two diabetes, unfortunately, um, that's it. Just, it's just a visual thing, cosmetic. There's no real reason to do anything uh, other than just the cosmetics. And uh, I've been there, done that, like I said, and it's time that we change all that. And if you agree, please put down in the comments, I agree. Uh, death to lawns, I don't know, whatever you wanna say, show me some examples, give me some links of where we can go and take a look at some alternatives. I'd love to see those. I'd love for you to share them with others, share this video with others, and of course, subscribe and like the, oh, like the video and then subscribe so you get notifications of future chapters. So we'll see you in the next chapter. Bye-bye.